So, uh, how many, just because uh, I want to kind of cater to people, uh, your guys' needs, um, how many of you guys are um, interested, interested in becoming a voice actor? Raise your hand. Okay. Some people are, I don't know, some people are very shy. Okay, first rule of anything you do in life, own your stuff, right? If you wanna be something, be open about pursuing something. Take, be, you know, own it. Don't, don't be like, eh, I don't know. Um, when I was in college, um, I was in a, an internship program uh, for entertainment, and um, the one of the guys who, who came and spoke to us um, told a story about some actor who was working as a barista in a coffee shop and whatever. But he was very honest about what he wanted to do. And there was a, right, a guy who was like a regular that came in every day. He always, you know, certainly got in a conversation and he said, hey, what do you, what, what, oh, you know, what do you do? The guy asked him, the customer asked him. And he said, I'm an actor. And it turns out that the guy was like a producer. And because they've already had this relationship with him every day, or like, you know, I think he ended up getting an audition out of it. Anyway, it may never come of anything, but if you think about like just life and opportunities, you never know who you're gonna meet, what's gonna happen in life. If he was not confident about being an aspiring actor, if he didn't speak up, that would have been a missed opportunity. Do you know what I mean? So I think with anything that you are pursuing, I think you should be very confident in that, you know? Um, if that's what you want to do, then do not feel ashamed that you want to do that, you know? Um, that's, I think, a, that's, that's a big, big lesson. Um, if you're going to pursue anything, pursue it, you know? Um, because if you don't own what you want to do, how can you pursue it? Acting is a very, very tough um, job. It's a tough uh, industry. It's, uh, it's fun, it's awesome, um, but it's really tough. Oddish and Psyduck. Um, <laughs> it's like I have Pokemon Tourette's. <laughs> like we're just saying things and, um, so, so it's very, so you, so the other thing that people would say is that if there is anything that you can do other than acting, go and do that. Because it is a really hard life, you know? Um, go and do anything else. If there's anything else that would make you happy, go and do that. Like only really commit to this acting thing if it's like the only thing that you are gonna do. And if, if you can't do it, it's gonna, make you crazy and you can't exist anymore, you know? Um, then only really commit to that. The other thing that I wanna say is um, voice acting is acting. It's two words, voice and acting, right? You're acting with your voice. But the more important word is the acting word and not the voice part, you know? Um, the more important Especially, I'm assuming that all of you guys who want to get into VO want to get into VO for animation or video games, right? You don't want to get into VO to do narration or phone prompts or commercials or, um, uh, I don't know, like uh, radio man on the street stuff. Or There's like a lot of, VO is a, like a lot of different things. Or um, corporate industrials, which is like, corporate training videos, that requires VO, I've done some of that. Um, uh, there's website VOs, you're telling people what to click on and how to, you know, tutorials and that. But that's not, I'm guessing, am I, am I correct here? Yay, nod or, or, no. or maybe you guys wanna do that kind of stuff. But you wanna do like characters and animation and video games, whatever. So the more important thing in all that stuff is the acting and not so much the voice. Um, when I'm casting and I'm directing, I'm always going to choose the better actor versus the actor with a nice sounding voice, you know? Um, so that's the other thing about it. Um, the reason I do this panel is because I think that um, 
what is not talked about a lot and what a lot of times we talk about acting and people say like, oh, follow your dreams, you know, go for it, yeah. Um, they don't talk about they talk about how cool the job is. They don't talk about the fact that it's a job, right? Um, it's a career. Sorry, I'm trying to make him candy. Um, Ratatata, ratata, by the way. Um, so they don't talk about it like a business. The actors that I know who are making a living and who are successful at this job treats acting like a business, which means you own your own company and that company is yourself. And the service you provide is voiceover, right? So the actors who are not as successful you know, they go on a few auditions, they, 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 they kind of think that, ooh, I'm going to magically get work because I'm good enough or because I'm lucky. You can get a career that way, but you are um, not doing yourself any favors because you're not creating opportunities for yourself, right? So let's say we ran a business. We all had a business, right? So one of the things with the business is we need customers, no matter what we do, right? So how are we gonna get customers, right? We want to make sure, we need to have some kind of marketing. We need to make sure people know who we are, right? We, I mean, before that too, we also need to know that we, we're good at what we do. We provide a good product or good service, you know? So we need to make sure that, that we have, have, we're very high quality, we've done all the training. So as an actor, you get your training. You, and I, by the way, I think that you should always be training. Um, I still take classes. Um, I think that's something that's very appealing to me as being an actor is that it's, um, you can always get better. And I guess you can either view that as uh, frustrating and depressing or you can view that as exciting and inspirational because there's like always the next thing that you can get. You can always level up, right? You're never gonna beat the game, you can always level up. Um, even if it takes you 190,000 XP. Um, there's another side up, by the way. Um, so, that's something that's very appealing to me. So I would, you should always be training, always be, be bettering yourself. So part of acting is also running yourself like a business and understanding. And what other things do you have to have in a business, right? There's accounting, which is your finances, right? What are you spending? What are you charging? What are you making money? Like how much money am I making this month? How much do I need to spend? How much all of that kind of stuff? Um, so one of the things that I like to at least talk about or address a little bit, especially for you guys, because you seem like a little bit of a younger crowd. How many of you guys are still in school? Okay. How many of you guys have graduated college and are working? Okay. Um, so, uh, that's what I figured, right? So, so, a lot of you guys haven't really gone out into the real world, world, real world on your own yet. So, it's just stuff that you guys should think about if you are choose to pr pursue this career. Um, I know that a lot of numbers get thrown around and it seems like it's a very lucrative job or whatnot. The main thing about um, being an actor is that um, it's very unstable. Um, it's like uh, being a freelancer uh, and anything, which means that you don't have an employer, which means there's no place that you gar guarantee to go to work and there's no guarantee that you have work. Your job is to constantly find work. So as an actor, I am constantly auditioning for jobs. I Auditioning is like my job because I do it every day, multiple times a day, and I need to do that to ensure that I get more jobs. Um, so that is, you have to be prepared for that. So they say, um, you know, actors have to have thick skin because what do you think the chances are of you getting a job each time you audition? You know, I think they say um, for uh, on camera, I think they say, if you are booking one out of every 20, you're doing really great, like really, really great one out of 20 jobs. And that job could just work maybe one day, right? So just think about how many auditions you're gonna have to do to just book one out of 20 jobs. 
right? So you better have a really good, your audition game better, better be really up there. You better, there's also like, you can take classes um, on audition techniques and whatnot. Um, so I just want to break down a little bit of the finances so that you can kind of keep in mind what, how much you have to work to kind of make a living at it and why so many actors have day jobs, right? So how many of you guys are interested in anime, specifically anime? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you guys are interested in like video games, like being video game voice actors? Okay. And how many of you guys want to be like specialized in like original animation and cartoons and stuff? You can raise your hand for multiple things. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Uh, so, anime pays the least. <laughs> Anime pays the least. And depending on where you live, you're either getting paid $50 an hour. Depending on where you live, you're getting paid a one hour minimum or a two hour minimum. Um, there are some projects that pay up to, I think, $140 an hour. I only know of one show in New York that pays $140 uh, an hour. I won't say which one. There's a Venonat. Um, and uh, then the bulk of the stuff pays, in LA, pays about $75 an hour. Um, and most of it, most of the anime is non-union. So, how, what does non-union and union mean? There is a union, well, it's technically a guild, called the SAG-AFTRA. It's a Screen Actors Guild and the American Federation of like radio, television artists, or television, radio, American television, radio artists, sorry, AFTRA. Um, they are a union that protects the actor, actors, so they have a minimum payment of stuff, right? If it's a non-union, they can pay whatever they want. They can come, they can, they can say, hey, this job pays $1, and if you say yes to the job, then you agree to be, have pay $1. Stuff can happen on when you're in recording. Let's say you have a bad engineer, and he turns something, and it's way too loud, and you go deaf. You have, you can try to sue and stuff, but there's nothing, no one's gonna help you to protect you against stuff happening, right? Um, let's say you did something and you know, you got paid the one dollar and then they, you found out that that thing that you made was like really popular and um, it was, they used your voice again and again over and over on other products and made a lot more money on it. You agreed to be paid for that one dollar that one time and that was it. And that's it. There isn't, you didn't get paid again when they reused it and made more money off of your voice. It's all non-union. They can do whatever they want. They can say, hey, here's some extra money to reuse your voice so they don't have to at all. They can do anything they want. They can also pay you lots of money. Um, it, it's all over the board. There's no guarantee. Do you have a question? Um, yes. With um, SAG-AFTRA, that connected, what happens is they're really big on not doing any non-union. Right, okay, so I will, I will get to that, right? Now the union, not only sets like payment guidelines, they have minimum minimum guidelines. It's like if you're working a anime project, you know, um, it's this is the minimum of what this is the very least you can pay the actor. You can't pay the actor any lower than this. For video games, this is the very least you can pay the actors. For movies, this is the very least. For the whatever, there's all these minimums, right? The other thing too is they if you make a certain amount of money, there is health insurance. The SAG buys a group health insurance for all the actors that make a certain quota of money and you now have health insurance. Because if you're not in SAG and you're non-union, you have to buy your own health insurance. That means you call up Aetna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Cigna, whatever company it is, and buy that health insurance yourself. When I did not have SAG health insurance, um, I think at one point I was paying um, over $500 a month was what I had to pay for my health insurance. Uh, most of you guys who are working, if you're working for a company, that's pretty much like take, taken care of because your employer, your boss is the company that you work for, pays in for the health insurance. So you have health insurance, but it's like you don't even notice it. But if you don't have an employer, then you're paying your own health insurance and it can get really, really costly, you know? So being a part of the union helps that. 
um, if you make the minimum to require, require for health insurance, you still have to pay for your health insurance, but it's much cheaper because they're, they're buying the health insurance as a group for all of the members that qualify. So they get a severe discount versus you as an individual like paying for health insurance. Um, I think it may be, I don't know, my, I, it might be a little bit easier now for individuals because of the Affordable Care Act. So you may have more options, but at the time I'm quoting prices that was pre-Affordable Care Act. So um, by the time the Affordable Care Act came, I got, uh, I qualified for insurance again. So I, I didn't need to buy my own health insurance. Now, um, the other thing that they do is like there's, if something happens and you're injured, they're supposed to help protect you, you know? There's all sorts of guidelines. They can't screw you over because SAG is watching them. Now, the power of SAG, in order for it to be union, the production company has to agree to enter a contract with SAG. They make an agreement. So the, the, guy, the, the companies that's hiring the actors have to agree, okay, we're gonna follow by these, all these SAG rules. We're gonna follow all these rules. There needs to be agreement, right? Why would a company be incentivized to go union if stuff is cheaper non-union and they can do whatever they want and they can screw over people? There's no real incentive, right? The only incentive is that the SAG actors are better. So that's why if you're in the union, you're not allowed to do non-union work because that's the only real power that they have. And that's why every once in a while with the video game, you know, stuff they, there may be, or even commercials for a while ago, they, the actors may strike and stop working, you know, because they're in negotiations and the, they can't get anywhere with the negotiations. So they're like, well, we don't have a contract, so we're not gonna work. Like, that happens. Anyways, that's high, neither here or there, but that's, that gives you an idea about that. So, um, to put things in perspective, right? Let's just talk anime, because we're at an anime convention, and that's like easy to talk about. And let's just use the basis of like, let's say $50 an hour, because it's an easier number to do math with, right? So $50 an hour, if you get a two hour minimum, two hours, it's like 100 bucks wow, I made 100 bucks in two hours. Seems like a lot of money, right? Here's the issue. How many lines can you record in an hour, really? So um, I think recording studios budget probably at 20 to 30 lines an hour. Most of them budget at 30 lines an hour. So they're expecting you to record for ADR, for anime, at least 30 lines an hour. And a lot of the good people work faster than that. So in, a two hour, in two hours, that's 60, 60 lines, you know? A half hour show or a 20, 22, 23 minute show, like a typical TV episode for anime, can have anywhere to like, from, excuse me, 300 to 500 lines. So that could be a lot of lines. Um, it can also, but you have to keep in mind that it depends on how talky the show is and how talky your character is. For example, I do, I voice uh, Hinata uh, in Naruto. She doesn't say much, you know? She doesn't, you know, especially in the early season, there's just a lot of, ah, and then, Naruto, like, <laughs> and she'd appear, and maybe she'd be on screen, but she didn't actually say much. So I could go in there, and I'm getting paid by the hour, you know, and I could record maybe a lot of episodes because it doesn't take that long, she doesn't have that many lines. Um, if I do Sailor Moon, sometimes Usagi has like 70 lines in an episode, or they'll have like, she'll have like 100, uh, 150 lines an episode around, that's kind of average range per episode. So it just takes me like, I don't know, like two and a half hours to finish an episode. So you think, oh wait, there's, there's two, over 200 episodes, but if you do that math, and how many hours, like, you can get through that really quickly, you know? Yeah. And it's, uh, and you end up, if you do the math, you're like, it's not that much money. Because truth of the matter is like, you're not working every day. You're working for a couple of hours. So if you need to make a living, then you better have a lot of jobs. I'll be on a lot of different shows. And what is the average length of an anime series? 
How many episodes in a season? 13, right? 13 episodes a season, right? So that's like, whoa, I was in a show. I was in 13 episodes. But you could probably, that's maybe like, if you were to like record every hour of every day, like, you know, doing it, and you, you did it all at once in a batch, and like, and it was all consecutive and stuff like that, I don't know, it's maybe like two weeks of work if you're the lead. If you're not the lead, it's even less than that. So it doesn't really add up that much money, to add that much money. And then you have to keep in mind, okay, so what are the things you have to pay for as adults? We're all adults here, right? Let's shout out some stuff you have to pay for. Food, rent, I heard. Car insurance, good. Gas, right? What other things you need to survive? Utilities. Utilities, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, utilities, that's utilities. Um, probably nowadays we need like internet, I guess it's also utilities. Um, health insurance we talked about, right? Um, if you're in SAG, you have to pay dues, membership dues to be in SAG. Um, the other thing you have to do as a freelancer is you have to pay your own taxes. So who here has, like, these people over here had a job, have jobs, right? You guys have jobs, you guys, you guys get a paycheck, right? And when you do your taxes every year, you fill out a form, right? And for the most part, you don't really have to cut, you might have to cut a check to the state and the federal government, maybe for a little bit of money. But for the most part, you don't actually write a check out to the government to give them more money, do you? No. Why? Because it's taken out of your paycheck because you're on a payroll. It's all done automatically. It's put into your social security, all this stuff. If you're, if you're a freelancer, that doesn't always happen. It means if you make $500, you'll get a check for $500. But that means come April, when you do your taxes, you still owe the government. The very first year I became a freelancer, I maybe made $10,000 in the entire year. That's really crappy pay. Like, I think school teachers get paid more than that. It was about 10,000, like, it was very little. And then, when I had to did my, I did my taxes, I owed the government like $3,000. I didn't have $3,000 just hanging out in my bank account. You know what I mean? Like. You have to, so as an actor, another part of that is being aware that you have to pay your taxes once a year and keeping money set aside so you have enough money. Not like, ooh, I got paid, I got 500 bucks, yeah, let's buy the next video game, you know, I'm gonna buy the next whatever, you know, I'm gonna go to the movies, I'm, I can go out, I, I'm gonna get multiple glasses of wine, I don't know how old you guys are, <laughs> you know, uh, because I, I got the money, yeah, I got paid. You have to keep in mind and be responsible to be like, ooh, I gotta save up some money, and I gotta make sure they have enough savings or whatever, my, or money just in my checking account, so that at the, when April comes, I have a nice lump sum that I'm gonna have to, t I'm going to have to um, uh, give to the government. Other thing is, we're all gonna get old, right? Yay. <laughs> you probably don't think you're gonna get old yet because you're so young, um, but we're all gonna get old and we can only work for a limited amount of time. Um, if, you, if you have an employer, if you go work for a company and a boss, the other thing that comes out of your taxes, sometimes, not always, depending on the type of job you have, is you, they can offer you a retirement plan in which they can put some of the money that you make and invest it into a retirement plan so that if you've been working for the company for 10, 15, 20 years, you, and when you retire, there is this whole savings kind of like set up as your retirement fund. Well, you don't have that as a freelancer, right? There's nobody like making that investment yourself. So you have to do that yourself, you know? So you have to like, maybe, I don't know, if you're really good at finances, pick a portfolio and invest your money in that yourself or uh, hire a financial planner to help you invest your money in a way because you're only gonna work for a certain amount of time. Also, for women, you're not gonna sound as cute and as young as you do right now as you get older. Like some of these older voice actresses that um, are like mentors of mine and that I adore and that are awesome, you know, they'll, they like have a joke and they're like, ah, I just play grandma and boys now. 
But at one point, they were playing cute, high-pitched teenagers. But your voice changes. And the truth of the matter is, there aren't as many grandma characters <laughs> in any shows. So then you're, oh wait, yes, Yannick? Well, it's been proven that, you know, just because it's a male character in the anime doesn't mean you can't have a female in Goku, Gohan, Goten. Yeah, th yeah, of course. That's why I said that women, as they get older and their voices get rougher, they tend to play little boys or, oh. or grandmas, right? But the thing is, younger women can also play voice little little boys it's not reserved for older women i'm just saying as a woman as a voice actor this is this is true as as a woman as an actor on camera there's less and less parts for you as you get older so you got to have a plan of like save up your money when you're doing well am i depressing you this 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 talk is usually very very depressing um but but i but i like to talk about it because i like i want to i want I want anybody who goes into this business, who is committed to pursue this business, to think about this in a different way. Like, think about it like a career, right? Um, I had a manager a long time ago, you know, say to me, you know, difference between a job and a career, right? Uh, a job is just a job you get, you go in and you do it, and that's that. A career is where every job gets you a better job or gets you another job. So that a career is something that builds where you get better and better jobs as in better projects to work on, more high profile stuff, or you get paid more and more and more. If that's not happening, then you're just working. You're, you don't have a career. And so I want all, if you are going to aspire to be an actor, I want you to have careers, you know, because if you don't, everybody's building somebody, something. If you go in and, and you go in and you punch a card and stuff, right? You want to get a promotion. You want to get a raise. You want to build that career as well. You want to do that as an actor. If not, you're just going to be working for a certain time period and it's just going to be, as you get older, it's going to be harder and harder, but nothing is getting better and better and you're not building a name for yourself. You're not commanding higher pay or anything like that. And it's going to get harder and harder and then you're gonna be like, uh, I'm old and I have no money. And that would suck. Right, all right, hold on, I'm just checking. There's nothing, There's nothing. <laughs> um, so I'm like, now I'm like lost my train of thought and stuff. Um, that's just kind of like the most basic stuff that I want you guys to take away with you to um, when you approach this, and if you want to approach this, think about it like any, think about it like becoming a doctor, you know? Like how hard do we have to work? And also think about, give the acting part of it like the respect, because that's always gonna be the most important thing. I'm not saying it doesn't have to be fun, it's gonna be fun, all of that kind of stuff, but that's the main thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the less depressing parts. Now let's say that you've committed to become a voice actor, you're gonna treat it like a business, you're gonna treat it like a career, all this stuff. Where do you start out, right? As I said before, is that you are a, you are your own business. And you, and I said that the important word in voice acting to me is the acting. So get training, I would say. Do take classes, especially if you guys are younger and you have opportunities, you know? If there's community colleges, take any and every acting class that's available. If there's university extension classes, take those things, especially when you're starting out. You, if you're starting out and your experience level is low and there's a lot for you to learn, anybody can teach you those things. You don't always have to go to the famous voice coach or the famous, you know what I mean, the famous Hollywood talent coach that works, just works with all the celebs and da 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 Because those guys are expensive. As, and if you're starting out, there's a lot for you to learn. You could just take basic classes and anybody can teach you that. And you're saving yourself money. And then when you build up, go to the next thing. I also believe that when you're training, ask questions. Go to people for advice, you know. Some teachers may not want to be bothered. Um, but any good teacher is going to 
really help you out, you know? Or people, you might find mentors in people. I've had mentors in people, but it's because you have to put yourself out there. That goes back again to when we said in the beginning, owning your stuff, saying that this is what I wanna do, you know? Um, put it out there and let people know, you know? So you don't know when an opportunity arises. So anything regarding acting, any classes you can take it re regarding acting is going to be beneficial to you. And that also means improv classes, um, scene study classes, theater, if you can do any plays, sketch comedy, all of that stuff. Also, musical classes. A lot of um, anime is ADR, um, which means that um, you're matching the picture, the mouth and stuff like that. And, we, and lots of times, um, musical theater actors are awesome at transitioning into anime because they have a natural rhythm so they hear they can hear the japanese there's a musicality there then their internal timing kicks in and they can say the line and it matches the length a little bit easier than somebody else you know um they're also they also know how to be realistically big right because truth of the matter is like some animation it's it's a little larger than life the stuff that happens in anime doesn't really happen in real life, right? So you have to pretend that stuff that that is is real. So you, but you want to do it in a way that's not too crazy and fake. And they say, um, I don't know if you're from, uh, if you're familiar with this term, but when an actor is tr when an actor is trying too hard to act, right? It's called pushing. We'll say, oh, they're pushing. It means that there's something fake about it. I can tell that they're trying too hard. They're trying too hard to be angry. They're trying too hard to be wacky. They're trying too hard to be sad, you know? Um, it's pushing and it's, and, it's just, and it's not that appealing. Because I think, you know when you interact with your friends or, or acquaintances, you meet somebody, you would tell someone's like being fake, you know? They're trying too hard. Really, maybe it's because they're nervous or they want to impress you or they whatever but there's like naturally you get that like mm, it's not appealing to me you know and it's the same way when you watch performances it's like everybody has their little spidey sense they can tell when it's like oh it's a little bit overdone it's like they're trying too hard to be an actor and stuff like that um so oh, sorry well, I'm setting my focus off there's nothing there oh it's it's one of those things where it turned blue but it's actually not blue yet um, so you, so, uh, what was, what was I talking about before that with the pushing thing? What were we talking about before that? Acting classes. Acting classes. Yes. Take all sorts of acting classes. Exactly. If you're in a college, take act, you know, try to, try to, you know, if you can, if you want to go to college for acting, do that. If you don't want to, you don't have to. I didn't, but I took a lot of classes still. Um, and, um, the other thing I would do, um, is, um, I feel like actors are a little bit like, it's acting is a little bit like psychology, right? You're gonna get in a character's head. Um, you're playing different characters in different points of view. And it's my opinion and my experience as a human and also as an actor that the more experience that you have, the better actor you become um, because you end up seeing different people. Seeing, seeing different characters, seeing, interacting and learning about the world. I think the more you learn about the world, I think the better actor you become. I feel like um, acting is just a way of presenting a reality, you know? And I think that it should always be, uh, the goal of it should always be telling something that is true on some level. So the more you as people learn about the world and also being able to relate to different types of people and different cultures and under try to understand where people are coming from, the better an act but better actor you will be because when you play different characters, you're trying to see it from that character's point of view. So I think that's a that is a like a good thing, you know? Uh, okay, so let's say you got your training, right? And now we are trying to start out, doing VO. Oh, the other thing about training that I think is very, very important. You guys are so lucky. You're so, 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 so lucky. And you're lucky because 
you have the internet. The internet is an awesome thing that puts everything at your fingertips, um, including research, right? So do your research. If somebody, if you see on Facebook an ad for a voice acting class, or if, some, if you see a flyer, you get an email for an ad for voice acting, voice acting class, before you go and jump in and just take that class, Google the teacher. Look on IMDb. It, you know, sometimes you'll, there are places like Hollywood casting person, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I get them. I have no idea. Like, and I, and I'm, I take classes all the time, so I'm totally open to taking classes. It's not even about that. But, but I'm just confused because I didn't sign up for it, so I don't know how I got this email. Like, how did they find me? How do they know I do voiceover? It's very scary in a way and weird. But I'll look it up because I know a lot of people in the industry and, you know, you, and other voice actors talk and stuff. And um, I'll be like, who? I've never heard of this, who is this? This is like, ooh. So I'll Google the instructor or I'll go on IMDD and the instructor and sometimes you're just like, oh, they haven't done anything ever, you know? Or maybe they directed a few things or cast a few things, but it was like shows that are super, super old. They're not currently working in the industry. So what they teach you might be dated because acting trends change and even the way people cast change and what, what people look for when hiring change. So always do your research. The other thing too is you can say, oh, well, if you feel like, I wanna take a voiceover class, I wanna take a voiceover workshop, you know? Look at the, look at the, the syllabus or the schedule. Oh, there's a gas leak. Um, look at the schedule and see what, what is, um, what's uh, available, oh, it's far away what what they're going to cover but then what i would do is i would look at other other classes too and and compare and see because then you can also see what is a reasonable going rate you know oh this is a weekend workshop and maybe the first email you got it was a weekend workshop and it was um it said uh, like three thousand dollars for two full days and if you didn't do any research, you were like, wow, well, it's, it's, it's like 16 hours, so okay, it makes sense, and they provide lunch, and da 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 it's like, it's like a getaway, okay, that's expensive, but, oh, but yeah, maybe that's, you know, I hear voiceover classes are expensive, and then you just sign up, and you give them your money, and then you might, I don't know what the rates are in this area, and it might vary by region, but then you start looking up other things, and there's equivalent programs or classes, and it's, and it's going for 1200 like everybody else is like hovering around the same price range, right? And you were like, hmm, that's weird. Why did I pay like double, you know? Like, so do your research and compare. And the other thing is ask people. If, if you hear anybody, a friend of yours or, um, or, you know, anybody, just ask them like, hey, did you take this class? How was it? Did you like it? Because maybe they didn't like it or, oh my God, it's so awesome. Like ask, I still ask people, like if I, if I, I was doing a scene study class. Um, I was doing a scene study class, and the way I got into that class was because um, I I booked um, a, a a pilot episode for ABC. Um, it didn't get picked up, so it was never made into a TV show. But it was a Damon Wayans pilot, and I was cast as one of the series regulars. It was uh, called Never Better, and it was. Uh, it was based off of a British uh, sitcom, also called Never Better, about a guy who was in AA and stuff. Jane Lynch was like in it, and like a bunch of other people were in it. And I was cast as one of his other AA regulars, um, and we shot the pilot, and um, we didn't have any lines. Uh, most of the regulars didn't have any lines, but um, this guy across from me in the circle um, was like so great, like his facial expressions were so fantastic. They were like really subtle, subtle, but like really, really funny, right? And I remember thinking to myself, he is so good. That guy is so good. Like he didn't have any lines, you know, he's another like regular, I think if it gone to series, because when we auditioned, we did have scenes and lines. If it gone to series, then we would all have like, you know, an episode about our character and there would be lines. But this guy was so good. So on break, you know, when we went back to our trailers and stuff, I like, I flagged him down and I, and I said, hey, I just wanted to say like, I'm really enjoying your work. 
And he was like, oh, thank you. I'm like, literally, I'm like sitting across from you and I'm like, I'm really trying hard not to bust up and start laughing and when we're shooting and stuff. And um, I said to him, do you, do you take classes anywhere out of curiosity? And he goes, why, yes, I do. And he gave me his number, uh, and the number, the email of uh, his acting coach and his acting class. And that's how I got into that class. And I didn't immediately, I, I wrote them and I said, hey, I'm interested in the class. Um, can I come and audit? Do you guys know about auditing? It's a, it's a very, it's a very common uh, practice. Basically, if you're interested in a class and you don't know if you want to pay, and it's an ongoing class, like they don't do it for workshops, which is like one or two days, but they'll do it for, um, they'll do it for if it's like a three week class or a six week class or whatever, right? As long as the series and stuff. If before you sign up, let's say you're interested in it, but you're not going to sign up for this round right away, you can say, hey, do you accept auditing? Can I audit? And that would just mean that you would show up and um, sit in the class. You don't get to participate, but you can sit and observe. And if you really like it, then sign up for it when it is. But it, it's, it's a great way to, uh, to learn uh, before, like test out. Not all classes allow you to do it, but it doesn't hurt to ask. You could always, and then if you're auditing the class, you know, especially like the class that I ended up in, is an ongoing class. So it's not like it, they meet every week and it's just ongoing and then you just pay month by month, right? But like if you're auditing class that, that's like that, on break or whatever, make some friends, talk to people in the class, say, what do you like about this class? What da 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 da, what do you da da da? Get your information and, and don't just audit the one class, audit several classes. Find out where you feel like you fit in the most before you put your money down and take that class, um, you know? So, um, okay, so now you have your education and whatnot, and now you need uh, to book a job, right? And we're still talking voice over here. Um, especially when you're starting out, you never, you don't know where your first job is gonna come from. It can come from any, anywhere, right? Here's the other great thing about you guys is, what do you have again? The internet, the internet right. So, Nowadays, there are things, there are sites, and it's not that I can, I can't recommend them wholeheartedly, because I have mixed issues about these sites, right? Um, they're called, they're referred to as pay-to-play sites, and they're a little bit morally ambiguous, because one of the rules that you should always keep, take with you as you're becoming an actor is, you should never have to pay for an audition. Bless you. Bless you. If you pay for an audition, that's a scam. Like, would you pay for a job interview? No. No, right? Like, you're the one that is bringing something to them, you know? So you should not have to pay for it. This is why these sites are very morally ambiguous. <laughs> Um, but it can be a good place for someone who has no credits to start out. The other caveat with these sites is you are going to need to invest in a home studio. And, it, and that's a huge investment. That's like getting microphones and getting software and equipment so that you can record yourself, maybe a booth, um, so that it's in a quiet space. Because basically how the pay-to-play sites work, and there's a bunch of them, there's... Um, there's Voices.com, there's uh, Voice123, there's Voice Bunny, um, there's a bunch of sites like that. There's also right now Fiverr is really big. Um, and um, what you do is you pay these sites a subscription, a yearly subscription. It could be anywhere like, I don't know, it's like $300 to $500 a year. It's a lot of money. And what, what they do is they let you set up a profile. So you put demos. You have, everybody should have a demo. But don't do a demo until you're ready, right? Um, demos should be no more than a minute long. You should always start with your most natural voice. If you do any special things like speak another language or if you sing, do um, accents or whatever, uh, yodel uh, can, uh, you know, I would put them towards the end. Um, the, they don't have to be huge scenes. They just have to be like a sentence in that voice. Should show your range. You should also be able to sustain that voice. 
Don't be like putting on some crazy like blah, blah, monster voice if you cannot do that monster voice for four hours. Um, don't do impressions because no one's gonna hire you as Homer Simpson because they already hired the guy who does Homer Simpson, right? Um, unless you're gonna be known as an impressionist. And there's some radio stations that do a lot of like celebrity impressionists, but you can have a demo of just impressions, you know? Um, so all those are your demo things. And then when you're shopping for a demo, because there are people who will produce your demo, um, also do your research on that, you know? Um, and if you write, write your own stuff. Do not pull stuff that's already in existence that's recognizable. Because if I'm a casting person and I listen to your demo and I look at your credits and I you know you didn't do that part but then I hear it on your demo, it just makes you seem really unprofessional. I wanna just listen to your demo and just think that, oh, those were all jobs you did. And it's not as believable if it's a recognizable job. If you're there, if you're if your demo, if you're on your demo, you're like Pikachu. You know, I know you didn't do Pikachu. You're not, you know, you didn't Pikachu. Like, so um, that's a little um, stuff stuff about demos. Um, I think it's if you're gonna before you hire someone, listen to the other demos that that company has produced. Do you like them? There's another website called uh, VoiceBank.net. It's either VoiceBank.net or VideoVoiceBank.net. That has most of all of the agencies in all the big markets and all of their clients' demos on that list, right? So you go, go to that and listen to other people's demos. There'll be people, like famous people that you know their demos are on there. And to be like, my demo should be like that. Or, you know, that's the quality level of demo that needs to be. If you write your own stuff, that's awesome. That's, I think that's the best because you've created really a character, you know? Be careful about, uh, one second, be careful about people who like produce demos for you. Sometimes they just have a stack of scripts and it's the same thing that they get, same stack they give to every person who walks through the door. And I've gotten demos before and, I, and I'll listen to them like, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, that was on the other guy's demo. They must have gone to the same place. Once again, it makes you seem unprofessional, you know? What was your question? Uh, no, no, the question was uh, Dratini. Oh, Dratini. Oh no, I only have a rotata. Yeah. It's like right behind it, I almost missed it. Can you connect this to the white bucket? Oh man, no. He made it, he didn't pop up. All right, anyway, I'm gonna stare at them. So, yes, you in that. How often should you update your demos? You know what, I, I think that's, it varies from person to person. A lot of voice actors will like, if they're looking for a new agent or they want something, you know, it's your calling card, so it's good for it to be updated. But, uh, Magikarp, but, um, uh, I, my demo has not been updated since I started. That demo that, that is floating around is, is like almost like before I started working or something. So it's, it, you can get by without it, you know. Um, uh, so what happens is pay to play sites is you, you put your demo up uh, and they put it up there and then they email you auditions. And then you get to audition and um, most of these auditions, though, are not auditions where you would go into a studio. You would record it at your own home. And you're not getting paid for, like, rental studio time. So that's another reason why it's a little bit sketchy on the moral, you know, ground and stuff like that. Um, but you're also competing against a lot of people who are all on these sites, you know. Um, and usually the people who work this method and do very well it's also like a job. They work from home, but every morning, it's early bird gets the worm. Because a lot of the way the auditions work is when a casting person submits a breakdown, that breakdown is like the description of what they want. Um, for those of you who don't know, sides are, sides are the, the things that, the, the dialogue that you audition with. Those are called sides, right? So um, they submit it and they'll say like, only accepting like 20 auditions or something because they don't want to listen to more than 20 people only accepting 100 auditions because they don't want to listen to more than 100 people but how many people do you think are on this website like as members there's probably like thousands of people so that's why you the people who are very successful at this get up early get out all their auditions go in their booth and boom, 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 audition like all day long and then they do that every morning like get get up early do a whole bunch, they'll be auditioning for hours. Like, once again, going back to treating it like a job, right? Here's the other weird thing about these pay to play sites is that it's a very huge different range of payment on it. Sometimes it's very cheap, 
sometimes it's a decent amount of money. Usually it's like, like I don't know, 50 to 300 bucks, maybe depending on how long the gig is. But it's not, they're, you're never gonna find like a show that is on Nickelodeon or on Disney off of these sites. They're just gonna be some kind of like indie whatever, you know, indie game or a little web series that someone's doing or whatever, and you get a couple hundred bucks. So you're gonna have to do that a lot, audition every morning and book a lot of these things in order to make a career in that way. But it is a way that you can gain experience. At least now you have the experience of working, you could say I have some credits maybe, you know, you've done some stuff, it could be a way to start. Um, one of the things that I wanna just kinda talk about quickly is knowing your own worth. It's a little bit different and I think that younger actors in their career, they don't, um, they don't think about it as much because they're just trying to get the work. So they want to gain experience and stuff. But it's a slippery slope if you are trying to gain experience and let's say you work for free or you agree to take a job very cheap because you want to be more appealing, you want to be hired, right? But the, the flip side to that is the studio who then hires you doesn't value you as much because they think, oh, you must not be worth that much, or you must not be that good because you're so cheap. It's weird. It's not true. Your ability doesn't equate how much you cost. Something could be like, you could be like the best voice actor ever, but you're just a nice person, so you're really cheap. But that's how, that's just the way people think. So it's a fine balance when you're starting out is you need to be aware of that. The other thing too is if you're starting out is that if you're cheaper and working a lot, you are having the ability of driving down the price for everybody. In which case, in the, it's not good for the community. Because the people who are veterans who've been working a lot, they're like, this is the acceptable rate for this amount of work. All of that has been established by people before you who have gone through what you've gone, you know, and this is kind of the established rate. If you come in and say, oh, I'm, well, I'm to be more appealing, I'm gonna work just below this rate. And then I get all these jobs, you know? At some point in your career, you're gonna have more career and then you're gonna have more self-worth, you know? And then you're gonna like wanna try to jump up and maybe that's your strategy or whatever, but you might find that the community is not very friendly toward you because they know that you were an actor who got their start by being cheaper than everybody else. Polly Huh? Polly Polly Wag and a Psyduck. Um, and so that's just something to keep in mind, of, you know, when you're starting out about knowing your own worth. Um, some of these paid play sites, instead of saying a price of how much they're going to pay you for the job, they'll say, please give us a quote. And this is really tricky because what ends up happening is it's like, wait a minute, what should I quote them, you know? And maybe it's something really easy, and you quoted something that you thought was really reasonable, but you don't know what other people quoted them. And then it just becomes a race to the bottom, you know? So that's why these pay-to-play sites, I, I, I'm, it's very controversial that I'm not, I'm not totally endorsing them in a way, but they can be a way to get your start, you know? Um, but, you know, just be wary of it. Um, and if it's available, like when I, I was on Voices One Two Three for a while and before, uh, before I signed up, I emailed them and I said, hey, I, your site seems interesting to me and I have a few credits and I'm considering joining. Could you give me a three month trial membership? And you know what? They did. And in the first day, I booked a job that made like $350, and at that time, $350 was the membership for the year, so I was like, okay, so I did it for a year. But um, then I quit because it was really like frustrating and tedious, because I didn't want to get up every morning and do all those auditions, because I was already doing other work. You know, I already was like, I had, I, I had stuff through my agent, and I had stuff through anime and stuff, and, and, I, and after a year of doing that, I was like, oh, I'm getting like $50 a year, 100 bucks, you know, for the amount I was auditioning, and then having to get up at like 6 a.m. to do all that stuff, it just wasn't worth it for me. I didn't want to do that, you know? Um, but that, but I know people who, that was a great place for them to start out and to get a few credits and experience before that. Um, I'm, I think I'm actually at time. I like to talked a lot. We didn't even get like to all the business stuff. But before I wrap up, 
is there um, any questions about something? Wait, right, yes, you. I have an actual question this time. Okay. So when I, I had a, a voice class in college and for a final exam we did a demo. Uh -huh. And that was, um, it was just a copy that my, my teacher did like for industrial stuff. Uh -huh. Is that like acceptable to use even though I technically wasn't the one like who originally did? I think so, because it's not identifiable, but that demo would probably go on a like, commercial, industrial type of demo, yeah. you know? Um, plus, usually industrials are internal to the company, so no one, unless that somebody, unless somebody like hired the people to do it, or somebody worked at that company, they would never know. Uh, you had a question over here. Yeah, how do you go about getting an agent? Oh God, that's a whole, I can't get into that now. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot get into that now. That's a whole other, that's like phase two. You see the back right there. Uh, one, do you have a home studio, how nice is it? And two, uh, how important is it to be in LA or New York for work? Um, I think it depends. Um, you, it depends on what you need to do. If you want to do original animation, uh, you have to be in, I think you have to be in LA. There's not that much in New York. If you want to do an anime you, and you want to be on Pokemon, it's mostly Pokemon in New York. You can be in New York. You can be in Dallas. You can be in Houston. You can be in Canada. You can be in LA um, for anime. For video games, um, you can be in Seattle. You can be in San Francisco. You can be in Texas. You can, like, there's, uh, it, the, but if you want to be the type of person who's doing a lot of stuff through like the website, pay, like pay to play and have, or being a person who like kind of records in your own home studio type stuff, then you don't need to live in that city. But if you want to work on these other jobs, you have to live in a city where they're actually doing that recording. Nobody's going to fly you out. When I work for Funimation, 99% of the time I fly myself out, you know, because I, I want to, so. Uh, they're in they're in Texas, yeah. You over there? Are there any specific companies you really enjoy and I, I think all of them. There's no like <laughs> I don't like yeah, every everyone's pretty cool in LA, so I'm I d I mean there's not also it's weird to say like I like working here, I like work here. It's strange. Oh no, yeah. I mean like in, in terms of like staff, people that you work with specifically. Not just the whole company. There's like so many studios that I go into, so it, it would be really hard to like name that. Most of the most of the places that I go to are really awesome. So, yeah. Yes. So I don't know if this is how it was for you when starting out, but I absolutely agree with don't do a demo until you're ready. Mm -hmm. But I also know there's the artist thing of you're your own worst critic. So how do you help yourself mentally get over that block of? I'm ready for a demo as opposed to... Ask somebody. If, uh, hopefully if you're ready for a demo, you've already gone through a class. Ask a teacher. All right. Ask them, do you think I'm ready to do a demo? What do you think? Ask them, what do you think, that, what do you think I need to work on? When I was taking a, com uh, I was taking a, work, uh, a four week thing at a VO thing and I was at Abrams, uh, at the very end they said, this last week is uh, your week to work on whatever you want to work on. I called up my agents and I said, hey, what do you think I should work on? You know? So ask somebody if you can't trust your own opinion. Yeah. Uh, yes, you and Fred. Um, do you think it's worth it for somebody who's going to stay in this area to get into voice acting, like let's say Florida? I don't, I don't know because um, I don't know the market here. I think that there's a place called The Kitchen that does stuff. Yeah. So you might want to look at, like, I don't know if they accept open submissions or whatever, but you might want to look into that place. Um, and like I said, it's about acting. So maybe just pursue acting. Any acting that there's, you got theme parks here, you got, um, you got productions here, you got theater here. Just pursue that and wherever you end up, you will have that background, well, you know? Well, I'm, I'm actually an actor, so I'm wondering if you oh. think that having an acting resume kind of helps, like even though you don't have voice credits. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so. All right, thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys are awesome.